Hey everyone, Bongo here, poultry people, and I have been given a laser engraver by Gear Best, I think it was. We love your channel. Would you like to review a product for us? Yeah, why not? We've got a cordless drill, a 3D printer, or a laser engraver. I've got a use for a laser engraver. I've got a cordless, crappy Chinese cordless drill, so I don't really need another one of those. Uh, so yeah, laser engraver, I'm going to play with that and see what's what. There's some good videos already out there on knocking them together, so I'm not going to waffle my way through and as I'm building this, because it might take me an hour or so. What I will do is I'll put it on time lapse and we'll do it like that. If there's any major issues in the build, I'll, I'll stop and start yakking. So let's get the time lapse sorted out. All right, here's the first tricky bit. That's wrecking my melon or wrecked my melon so I worked it out. You've got these nuts and columns, 5.1 star 10 star 6. On the top two wheels, it's columns. And on the bottom one, it's a nut because the nut actually slots in to the, it, that hole there is a little bit larger than these two holes. These two are columns, those two are nuts. And it doesn't really say differentiate oh yeah there is a little symbol there it's very hard to see unless you wear glasses I don't wear glasses yet uh, and then the second thing is it actually says the two side brackets shall be installed in the same way so you'd think that was they'd have to be exactly the same but they're not they I think they need to be a mirror of each other so when they go together they're, they're both in the right direction so that's that's where I'm, I'm, I'm sort of scratching my head at now. I've left this loose because the, uh, one of the instructions I read on the internet was to don't tighten it up until it's uh, been centralized on the band stuff that you're gonna Quite a fiddly, tricky little thing, especially if you're not used to this sort of fine fessling around with components. If you're coming from, say, a woodworking background, it's a bit of a head scratch to tell you the truth in some parts. The instructions are extremely vague, to say the least. They're, well, they're all there, but they do require that you, that you scratch your head and work them out. You're also going to use the internet a lot. If you look at the Alpha YC30 page on the Gear Best, there's a video on there that walks you through a YouTube video, which is quite good because if you go to the cog at the bottom of the screen, you can alter the playback so it plays at half speed. So you can really analyze the steps needed to construct it all. Things like which way around did they go properly? It says slide them in. Put two T nut ten fifteen mil in advance. You slide them up smooth side down with the roughish part of the thread upwards. As you put the screw down, it's going to pinch the track down against the body of the CNC laser. But we're at the point now where I put the computer together. Fresh computer. I bought it second hand, had it wiped, fresh install of windows, so it's as it's as bare as the day it was ever made. USB leads a bit small, I'm probably gonna buy three meter one of these, make it a bit longer. So yeah, they sent mine with a, a European lead, but it's only a, one of these two pin, I used to call them cassette leads, and you should have one of these lying around your shed somewhere, so I just swapped it out. Put one with a British plug on it. 
The only thing I've got left to do now is I'm not too sure if I've set the tension right on these because I've got monkey strength. I tend to over tighten things. So I'm not sure if these are, are too tight or not, to tell you the truth. Time will tell. It was hard to know which one is Y2 and Y1, which one's Y2 and which one's Y1. Who knows? The other connections seem okay. One thing it doesn't show you, there's a button on the motherboard right down here. As she turns it on. It's, I've plugged it in now, but I've not turned it on. Also, on the laser itself, that's an on button, and it rotates until it stops, goes back, click. I'm guessing that's an on off button. Again, it doesn't really say anywhere in the instructions. We've got our files, we've put them into the computer. So what we're going to do first is we're going to double click on CH34SER. That's going to extract everything, all the files needed. Uh, do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. And then we're going to go to install. And it's going to install. Right, the Arduino. Uh, that was flashing away there. And it's come up there. Driver install success. Fantastic. Then double click on the software. And again. Restore firmware. We don't need to go there. Go straight to laser. Double click on lightfire.exe. Or right click and make a shortcut. So you can add it to the desktop. Makes it all a lot quicker. I've done that already. Double click on lightfire.exe. always comes up with an error on mine okay takes us to a blank page and nothing seems to be happening along the top here you've got print picture NC sender quick tagging device settings so I'm going to click on NC sender and then I'm going to click back onto print picture did you hear that clunk then that was the computer program speaking with the CNC engraving machine and if we look at the top here where it says port name and board rate, my, so my COM port is COM3 and my board rate is 115200. Actually, the board rate should be the same for your computer, but the COM port may be different depending on where it's picking up on, the, on your USB system and how it's being converted. Let's click on tab for device settings. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. Uh, my laser type, and we're going to put it in manually, is DIY 8000, 12 volt, 2500 milliwatt. I need to adjust the weak light setting to, to about 8 or 9, because it's quite bright otherwise. And at this point, the blue light flashed on my board, and the weak laser came on. It will have automatically as well picked up these settings here, it's pertinent to the laser engraver itself, it will have picked those up. I've had to reverse my I reverse my x-axis just to get it to work in the position that I've got it in and the reverse z-axis is non-functional, doesn't matter if that's on or off so I might as well turn that off, that makes no difference at all. Laser power, you'll adjust this to suit the wood that you're going to use but for the time, time, time being leave it on 100% Go back to tab 1, print picture, and you'll see that we've got X, Y positions here. In the centre here, it sets a 5 millimetres. You can go more accurately than that, and you'll use this to set plotter where you want to set the start of your laser. Doing some little test steps. Y plus, X plus, Y minus, X minus, laser on weak, laser on strong, laser on weak, laser off. At this point of the build, you, you're now going to have your laser on and you're going to need to tune the laser. You've got the point going as, as fine as you can get it. Put on the glasses provided so you get a really good look at it. Use the focusing mirror underneath it to focus that blue beam into as fine a dot as you can get it. Do it when it's on weak laser and then pop it on full laser power 
and when it's right, it'll start burning. We've got a 1v1 running across the back there, and that's actually pinning the machine to the wall, so in case the machine gets knocked, it's not going to go anywhere. And then under each leg, we've got a packer. That's the same thickness as the piece of wood that we're actually working on. So we don't have to refocus the laser to do the work. Yeah. Quarter inch maybe, maybe that's half inch, maybe that's around about one inch. And you'll be making these up out of the mistakes that you make. That one there, running the laser too fast, not hot enough, not, not powerful enough. This is tab one. It's for printing pictures using a dot system, not a line system. It's fixed. It will only print the size of the picture that you put in it. So if you put in a five centimeter picture, it'll only print it at five centimeters. There is no real way of increasing the size. You can increase the pixel size a bit, and you can increase the size a, t a tiny amount, but no, if you want to print a 20 centimeter picture out using this, you have to put a 20 centimeter picture in. I've had a little bit of success with it, not much. It takes ages using this dot method, and at the moment I'm just using the line method. We'll go to tab two now. Everything's set up here. I've got laser. I'll turn laser on weak again. Tab two, NC sender. This is where I do most of the work. I find pictures off the internet, so I go to and then download them, save image as, click on the load picture, select which one I want to use. Cats, for example. Down here, it'll give me the width, it'll give me the height. And in these two boxes, both of these values are fully adjustable. You can take that at the moment, that's at 26 millimeters by 54 millimeters. We can, of course, increase that to whatever size we want depending on the limitation of the board, and it'll print it out. Of course, the one thing you have to remember is when you print out a small picture, slightly larger, you start getting pixelation. You need to be thinking about using large photos to produce large detailed work, which of course then takes longer, of course. This one took hours. This adjusts the amount of detail. I tend to look at the edges really and see how smooth or rough they are around the eyes. Can't zoom in on this which is a shame. Click on next. We can go to do a test size. So it'll, it'll do a test size on what we want first and then when we're ready we can click the start button there. This and then we, the speed is set at 200. You can adjust the speed, you can adjust the laser power and find your balance in between them on the media that you're doing. Just a quick point about setting up the computer. Get it all up to date, get it all updated by the Windows updating system. Once you've done that, turn off the Windows updating system so it doesn't go into an automatic update, which at some point is going to force a restart on you, probably at 2 in the morning in the middle of a long burn. Turn the Windows update off, turn the display monitor off, and the hard drive power down. That automatically can turn itself off after about half an hour. So turn everything down in power saving so there is no power saving and oh, the, the computer will be on all the time. What I do is I, I manually turn off the monitor and then let it carry on doing its stuff. Because this is what happens. I set it to go overnight. This, you're probably looking at six or seven hours for something like this. The computer decided it was going to do an update of itself in the middle of this and it just stopped. And it's taken quite some time to get to this far already. I was quite upset. There we go. I wasn't that upset. It's just it's part of the learning curve. But it's a shame. I'll keep that for something. Maybe cut it down and use it, use it in some sort of project. It's still very nice. But it's just a shame it wasn't the full thing. Yeah, keeping a journal. It's good to keep a record when you first start. Because it helps get it in your brain what's going on. I was running these at way too high a speed. Power is way too high. And you can see in the results of the a William Morris experiment I did. Speed was massive, massively too high, power was too high, too much burn, not enough definition. And then as you're doing this and, and keeping track of it, it's, it's getting cemented in your head. Village coasters, school, oh, oh these are just ideas I got for some coming up. Eggie Williams on pallet wood, these are very early ones. Speed 600, power 100%. Conclusion, too darkly burnt. Speed 600, power 80%. 
Conclusion, still too dark, you burn. You just keep on faffing around until you find the powers that are suitable for your, your material more than anything, what you're going to burn. It's a great little machine. It's been running away like mad. I've got loads made here over the last few days. It's starting to take a bit longer now because I'm going for much more detail. Did some experiments with laser power, with a, a bender image. So here's the one at full power. And there's a lot, it's, you know, he's nicely detailed and everything, apart from the hand and his hand holding a beer bottle. So I reduced it right down to 70%. And it's slightly better. Took it down to 65% much better talking to 60 percent just too faint Bite my shiny metal ass but you can see a bit more detailing on the on the beer bottle so maybe it should be set to about 62 63 percent and of course that's down and that's for this type of wood it would be which is different to that type of wood I mean, but they're both a pine. But they're both very different. So I can see some lines going on. So not the best. So it needs more faffing around with there to get that to work properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest, investigate for, for coasters and stuff like that. I'm going to carry on with Engraver Master for the time being. Right, I'm going to start looking at laser GRBL to see how good that is and see how much more control I've got using that piece of software. Right, this is the final, final bit of video, I think, before I finish off the video on the laser engraver. We're about a proper week into it now. Had a few ups, had a few downs. The laser engraver itself has been great since my initial setup. I haven't bothered to, I, I tensioned the belts first of all, I got it wrong a little bit, that, that should be less there and, and a bit more over there. It seems to etch well, this one's a bit, this one's coming out nice but it's looking a little bit uh, chunky when you look at it in detail close up. It's been at it now for 2 hours 20 minutes, another 5 minutes this will be done. Not a quick process, but you can crack on with other things as you're doing it. There we are at the end of the video and... I really like this. I'm enjoying myself a lot with it. Looking, looking forward to getting more into CNC work. Especially now I'm getting older a bit. Might be something I can do into my old age even. Just need to prep the wood up. That's looking quite good. It's basically two 6B1s joined together. Nice decent wide planks that I get off a certain type of pallet. Oh god. Whoa, it's a hell of a subject. I'm looking forward to getting more and more into it, learning more and seeing where it takes me. Thanks Gear Best for sending it to me. Anyway, crack on and laser something. Zap it. Zap it good now. Where's that buzz? He needs a good zapping. Devil that he is. Thank you very much for watching. Crack on and make something.
some furniture. We've got, I'm watching rust at the moment. We've got the CNC running. And we've got a hedgehog. Hello. We've also got a Mr. Butters. Why is there a hedgehog in our workshop, Mr. Butters? Why do I never see hedgehogs? Like, nicely now. What is this? It's, a, it's a one of those hedgy hogs. It walked in and turned around thinking it was butters. And uh, it was a hedgehog. <laughs> 